What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. I've got a car that I've been using the last few days. It's a 2017 Hyundai Elantra. Let's find out what I love and hate about it. All right, so the first thing that I want to touch on here is this car is a rental, which is why it's got an Ohio plate on it. But one of the things that I'm actually surprised about is the fact that we still have cars with keys and fobs that are separated. I'm surprised that these aren't kind of just one piece, the flip out thing. The fobs are fine, you know, but they're a little bit old school. We've got uh, lock, unlock, and then hold for the trunk release as well as a panic button on the back end here. But then you do need this kind of separate key. And so a kind of a modern day car like this it just reminds me of a typical old school Toyota low-tech key. Anyway, no big deal, but that's what this sucker comes with. Now, one thing that I want to say here is I actually um, really like the design of this car. It's kind of something that I haven't really noticed except for now when I've been borrowing it and I like it I actually like this big grill I think this is actually kind of Audi ish it's got this big mouth it's actually kind of the reverse instead of the spindle it's kind of this wide um, trapezoid that uh, kind of is the antithesis of the Lexus one I think it looks pretty good it's got some big side strikes or horizontal strikes on it which look all right I'm not a huge fan of that I kind of like more of that mesh or that dot pattern on them but I think it looks good and what I really like about the car overall is that it has a nice kind of four-door coupe-like look, and I actually think that it's really nicely balanced, and it's pretty sleek looking. It has a lot of kind of Dodge Dart, you know, appearance to me. Uh, that car obviously didn't do that well, and so it's kind of funny that someone was able to make that work. And so it has kind of a nice sloping roof line here, very kind of curved, and it looks really nice. I mean, and for a small economy car, I think it's uh, done pretty nicely. And if we go around to the back here, what I'll even show you here is we've got kind of that fastback line on the back here. But even if we go right back here, it's a pretty nicely balanced. It's kind of squares out on the bottom here. As you can see, it's got a kind of a nice planted look. And so I actually really like that. I think it looks, looks really, really nice and decent here. Now, the other thing that I actually really like about this is right down here, you can see these wheels. And these wheels are kind of a dark gray they're kind of a gunmetal. I'm sorry the car isn't totally clean right now. I tried to clean it up, but the way the roads are here in the winter are pretty gross. But So you can see here that they are gray and even the wheels can't get that clean. I really kind of like that finish, that gunmetal finish. What you can see here is that these are 15, or 16 inch wheels, 205, 55, 16s. And so overall, I actually think that those work pretty nicely with this car. Now, I would say that I would like larger wheels on it. I think it would give it a little bit more sporty look. What I think is a mismatch is that the black with the gray and the gunmetal finish on the wheels, I think it looks great. But to me, all of this kind of satin, almost kind of fake nickel finish on the grill here should actually be color matched to those wheels. I think that would give it a much kind of more unified and sporty look. You know, when the Chrysler had the 200S, which I kind of make the equivalency here, uh, you know, on their Sport or their S version, they kind of made everything kind of grayed black, blacked out on that gunmetal color, and I think it really worked. In fact, even the trim around you know, around here, which is all just kind of a rubber plastic. Be kind of nice if that were a gunmetal finish as well, I think. But, you know, I get it. It's not an expensive car, and so you can't have everything on that. Now, the other thing I want to show you here before we go anywhere else is how small the trunk opening is. Now, the trunk itself is not small, but you can see here it's going to open up here. It's not a hatchback, and so you only have really about a foot long deck lid, and then the opening here is pretty small. It's kind of a very short cutout here. And so like this box here at Costco has to go in like this because you just don't have that much clearance top to bottom here. So something to keep in mind. So that trunk leaves a little bit to be desired. Now let's go ahead and go inside here quickly. And the first thing I wanna show you before we look at anything else is that the seats are cloth. Now, this car is about 35,000 miles on it. It is a rental, so kind of don't judge the car on the cleanliness of the cloth. But again, 
you know, I'm not averse to cloth seats because they tend to be pretty comfortable in hot or cold temperatures and they're okay. And this material is okay at best. Again, a little bit dirty, but the material is okay, but it's not great. And, you know, I'd compare it to actually the GMs that have like this kind of jersey mesh material on their cloth seats. And I feel like that is a higher quality type of cloth material than this stuff. It's, this really just seems very low rent. And for the base model of the Elantra, you know, you, you are going to have to expect that when you get this kind of car. But um, I think they could have stepped it up just a little bit without probably adding to too much or adding much cost to it. Now, if we jump in here, I do want to show you. If we look at the interior, you'll notice that it looks very much like the Sonata. It's actually a really nice interior. It's kind of pretty simple. It's kind of got this angled, almost Audi-like uh, center console. It's kind of tilted here towards me uh, as a driver just a little bit and everything looks pretty nice. And one of the subtle things that they've done here is like this kind of brushed metal finish around the edge of the plastic, which kind of breaks that up and gives it, I think, a little bit, a little more premium look, even it kind of rings around the knobs there. And then you've got that kind of finish down here as well. But that around there as well as around the vents over here, as well as you've got a kind of a similar finish around the gauges. And as you can see, it's over here on these vents. And then um, not quite as a shiny uh, finish on this accent line on the door, but a pretty decent looking finish, right? So I actually think that they've kind of done a nice job of hiding some of that plastic. Even on the little uh, vent opening scroll wheels right there, you can see we've got a little bit of that metal finish. It's just kind of perceived value. And so I like the fact that uh, this interior works. It's the kind of same thing you see in the Sonata and they've continued to leverage it. Now, a couple things I want to do here and let's see if we can get in on that instrument cluster while I get out the key and fire the sucker up. And what I like is that it tells you that the wheels are not aligned and I can turn those back so that you can back out straight, which is pretty cool. What I want to show you here is that you get a pretty nice little infographic LCD right there. What you can see here is if, as I move the wiper stock, you can see um, the information being presented on the display. So no question about what position you're in. And so I do like that. And I also will show you here, I'm just gonna hit the brake and put it in reverse. And we do have a backup camera, which you would expect, but then also we have trajectory on those lines, moving trajectory, which is also a nice little feature. Um, so I'm, I'm actually pretty impressed with that. Now, one thing that I want to show you here back to the steering wheel is that what might not be super easy to see is that this is all plastic. There is no leather on this. And even on my Fiat 500, all the Fiat 500s came with a leather wrapped steering wheel. This plastic isn't bad and it does have some texture, but you can grab it and feel it. And if you've driven a car with a leather wrapped steering wheel, again, you know, they're prone to getting worn down over time, but it's just one of those subtle things where you're interfacing with your car all the time and actually touching that leather just feels like a little more premium. And especially when you start grabbing something like this, which tends to feel a little more polished, a little more plasticky, you know, it's just kind of a constant reminder that you're driving a low rent car. So it's just funny to me that more car manufacturers, no matter what level of trim the car is, don't go with um, leather wrapped steering wheels just to give the driver kind of that perceived you know, experience of quality. So that's a little bit of a miss, I think, um, but it is what it is. Now, the other thing that I was kind of surprised on, down here, you can see that I have blind spot warning on. You can turn it on and off here, and it will show you on the dash, so I turn it back on. So I was actually surprised, you can see up here in the, the glass, if I turn it on and off, you get a little light in the corner of your mirrors that show you that one, it's active, but when there's a car in your blind spot. So especially at this price point, I'm really actually surprised by that. And it's kind of nice. Now, the other thing that that means is you saw no switch down here. The headlight controls are on this stock, which is a little surprising. Not good or bad, but it's, you know, I assume they'd be down here. And it does have automatic headlights, which is also a nice feature. Something that you take for granted in a lot of cars, but on kind of the base model here, I think that's a pretty sweet deal to have that as well. Now, I actually am... A, think that the materials that they use in this are a mixed bag. First of all, I actually like this. It's a little bit of a soft touch material on the dashboard. I think it has nice texture. It has this nice hide looking texture and it's kind of a dark gray. I would call it like charcoal, not black. 
but I think that looks pretty good. And if we look here on the door, it's kind of the same thing. You can see it's got a nice like elephant high texture, has some nice shape. It's, you know, it is harder here than it is here or here, I should say. This is the softest, this is harder, and this is harder. And I will tell you that uh, your eye doesn't necessarily pick up that this is a hard plastic versus the softer material up here. They do a pretty good job of that. Now, the, my problem with it is when you get down here, this is a hard plastic pretty much everywhere along here. And it looks uh, lower rent to me because the texture is almost the same, but it's this color. Now, I wouldn't call it uh, tan. It, I think it looks tan kind of in this light, but I would call it a very light gray. And if they had gone with tan, kind of a sand color, I think it would look a little more premium. But honestly, even if they had gone with the same kind of charcoal color down here, I think your eye would not necessarily think that this is a lower rent plastic. And that's because to me, gray plastic is just used so commonly on cheap hard plastics that anytime I see like this gray type of plastic, this light gray, I just think Fisher Price toys, I think uh, parts, I think, you know, um, garage tools, whatever. And so I just hate like light gray plastic. I hate it in GMs. I hate it in this car. I hate them in pretty much all cars. There's just nothing about it unless it's actually leather. I just don't think gray comes across well. It, it just tends to look like plastic. So anyway, um, I wish they had color matched this upper portion and this lower portion. I think that would have felt a lot more quality. Now, let's also talk about the center console here. And one of the things that is kind of nice and kind of bad is that it actually feels and looks pretty nice here. But uh, if we go up to here to the head unit, what you can see, if I go to apps, what we have is Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I think that's pretty awesome that they're there. And to get to the plug, you actually will push this sucker back and it's kind of spring loaded. It's a very soft touch. The USB port is down here. You have two uh, 12 volt ports and aux in. One of the things that I think is a little weird is that you have this pretty deep cavern here but it's not a really kind of a natural place to put a phone so once you plug it in you can kind of set it on its side my phone is pretty big so it's it's kind of a tight fit when you have a plug in there the plug is kind of hitting against this wall so I'm a little surprised that they don't even either have more like dividers where I could slide the phone in or more of a shelf where I could slide the phone in here now it wouldn't make a lot of sense I think to to have this sucker closed and put the phone up here, there's a little ridge and that's kind of what I've been doing. But when you have this flat surface here in the phone there, which I think is a great place to hold it, the problem is there's no pass through for a cord. So I can't use Apple CarPlay in that way. So it has to be open and I have to put the phone in here, which is kind of like floppy. Um, the other thing that I really don't like about this, and I think they do it to make it seem like a quality piece, is that I've opened up this door here and then I was initially trying to pull it closed and it wouldn't go and I was like, oh, I don't want to break it. And you, you'll quickly to figure out that you have to push it up and release it and I think that's kind of a thing to maybe exude quality but the problem is it's pretty slow I mean it I don't really think that's necessary to do it like that so I'm not sure why they did that and I think it's a little bit of a miss as opposed to having another like a, a slot right up here where I could slide the phone or something um, but you know it's, it's additional storage and there's a little rubber mat down there so you have pretty nice sound dampening um, but not not super super thrilled with it now i do want to show you here and give you some comments on these cup holders well they look pretty nice because they're outlined with metal there they have no little spacers which sometimes cup holders have and they're not that tapered so a typical cup like this it's quite a bit of room to kind of move around as you can see here sometimes they have little teeth in there that will adjust but not on this one they're just holes all right, now I said it has Android Auto and Apple CarPlay because you can plug it in. But this actually has a pretty nice system for connecting your phone via Bluetooth to it. So for hands-free calling, I'm not actually sure where the microphone is, but you know, that absolutely works. And then you can actually stream music. So if I go to media here, because I've already paired my phone, it'll find it and it'll stream music and that's really nice. What I don't like is that this little bar down here continues to scroll light across and that's really kind of annoying after a while. I get that I'm streaming music, that, that little progress bar, which is constant and it's more annoying at night because you kind of have this light 
bright line that just keeps going across the screen. I think it's totally unnecessary. I think that's kind of silly. I'm not sure why they did that. Um, that also brings me to just in general, the interface overall on this thing. I think it's okay, but there's nothing, if I go to here to stereo, there's nothing super nice about it. You can see here, it's it's got a pretty standard like smartphone Android app look. You know, there's still a little skeuomorphism on the buttons. So it's not super, I don't know, super clean. And yet it's not also super, you know, elegant. And so while it's okay, it's pretty functional. Uh, you know, it's it kind of be nice if there was a little investment either in one way or the other to kind of make it really modern and minimalist and clean looking. Uh, it just looks a little aftermarkety to me, even though this is what comes with the car. So nothing wrong with it. I'm just, you know, when you get into something like a BMW or an Audi or an Infiniti and you look at the interface, they just feel so much more finished and polished, which is, which is pretty nice. Uh, the other thing is obviously when you're listening to music, you do want to use your steering wheel controls. And I want to show you here, cruise control and everything is on the right side here, which is actually a little weird to me because on the left side, I have the volume rocker and the hang up mode for the, the phone and all that. To me, I, you know, and I, I'm not trying to be right hand biased here, but on so many cars, the volume control, whether it's my Audi or a Jeep, volume controls are over here because, you know, your hand is closer to the stereo for us left-hand drive folks. And I just felt like this rocker right here is kind of the obvious one for volume controls. Uh, not over here, but that is how it's set up. So no big, no big whoop, but it's um, a little backwards to what I expected. Okay, now I wanna show you here the back seat because I do have this front seat set up to where I would use it as a five foot eight person. Let's swing out here and jump in the back. And I think a couple of things here. Because of the sloping line here, you're gonna have to absolutely duck down a little bit. So you're gonna have to kind of uh, crane your head just a smidge. But I wanna show you here that I have quite a bit of leg room. You know, my feet fit under here. I can lift up my toes and hit the seat. But you know, in terms of knee room, I'm certainly not into the back of the seat. Now this seat is pushed back almost all, as far as it will go and you can still get a person in here. What I would say is that, you know, this is kind of much more like my Audi or most compact cars, but you could absolutely slide this seat up forward a little bit. The front passenger would still be more than comfortable and you'd actually have pretty good leg room back here. And I will say that actually is a pretty big difference over the Chrysler 200, which I really like, but man, it gets pretty crowded and the door even encroaches a little bit on the 200. Back here, it just feels a lot more roomier and I'm not sure if it's kind of this upright design of the door or what, or maybe the window goes back further so you don't feel as claustrophobic. Headroom here, um, I'm gonna tell you that this is no problem. I'm sitting back here and you can see I've got a couple inches before my head, maybe an inch and a half, two inches right here before my head is gonna hit the, the ceiling, no matter, even if I'm forward or back. So I actually don't feel claustrophobic. Now, if you're taller than me, you know, taller than five foot eight, you may have an issue with it, but uh, I can't simulate that too well. And you do have cup holders back here. They're right there. And you also have right here, kind of spring out cup holder with the adjusting bars, which I think are missing from the center cup holders. So I'm not sure why you would need so many cup holders back here, but there are four cup holders for really three spots. Well, two adult size seats and one that has to sit in the middle, one that might have to sit B-I-T-C-H if, if you need to. It also has 60-40 folding uh, rear seats, which is pretty nice. All right, now let's finish up and talk about the engine. So one of the things that I really do like about this engine is I'm gonna stop here and you can see it's idling, but this car makes zero noise. You would think it's actually start-stop technology. Now, if I get on the gas a little bit here, obviously it's not start-stop because you don't hear a starter engage the motor, but I will tell you, when you get on it, it does kind of make a lot of noise, not really a nice satisfying noise and maybe a surprising amount of noise for how quiet it is when you're stopped or idling. So that's a little bit surprising. It is decently peppy. Um, it's not, mm, it's certainly not as peppy as like my two liter turbo Audi engine, certainly more peppy than my Fiat 500 uh, multi-air engine. I would call it just very much in line with most small compact cars, maybe 
not probably more like the Chevy Sonic, uh, not even maybe as kind of torquey as the Chevy Cruze, but absolutely fine for moving around, just gets a little loud when you get on the gas. But otherwise, totally adequate for this car, and probably the surprise of the upside is how quiet it is at slow speeds. Even right now, the engine is running, and you can barely hear it. It's taking the Hyundai out on the road here, and basically what I want to say is that, first of all, ride quality is pretty fine on a smooth surface here, kind of what you would expect, but you do get a lot of noise and road undulations transmitted through the car. And what it kind of surprises me is how tall the sidewalls are on the tires and how much you still feel like these are almost like thin walled or low profile tires because you get quite a bit of, like I said, kind of road feel, road noise, and maybe even that harshness that I wasn't expecting in this particular type of car. Now, it is an economy car, so that does explain quite a bit of it, but even on my Audi where I have the 18 inch wheels, I wanna say that the ride is a little bit harsher. You just feel all of the, the, the road seams and the concrete seams more than I do in some of the other cars. And that may be just dampening and other things too, but you, you do feel it. Now the trade-off on that is the car actually feels um, quite a bit more precise than I would have actually expected. And so steering um, inputs are definitely reflecting the car. I can kind of wiggle the steering wheel here a little bit and it's, it's kind of very darty. So it's actually kind of a nice sporty feel on a car this size where it could out easily be kind of like a, a softer, floatier, Civic-like ride. So, that's cool. Now down here we have the drive mode, and that allows you to scroll between Eco, Sport, and Regular. Now, I've been driving on the Eco, which is how I've been getting pretty good, nice gas mileage, and I think for commuting it's just about perfect. And if I put it in Sport mode, what ends up happening is that we get kind of a snappier off the line response. I don't know that it's faster, it just feels snappier and then it holds the gear longer. And so what I mean is it uh, doesn't shift quite as quickly, it shifts later. And on top of that, when you let off the gas, it just kind of holds the revs. And so you definitely do coast further because the engine is still basically engaged. So if I hit the gas here, whoa, snappier. And you can see how high it'll red line, almost a red line. Um, I'm not going, obviously, very quickly here, but if I punch the gas a little bit, and now I let off, you can see I'm totally off the gas pedal, and it's still holding those revs pretty high, so that's really what sport mode does here. It gets kind of annoying, to be really honest, and I can't really see anyone wanting to use that on a daily basis. All right, so the engine is fine, and this car has about 35,000 plus miles on it, and it runs fine. It's totally adequate. It's about what you'd expect for this car. In some ways, it surprised me. I will say, though, that it's kind of interesting because, you know, when I make some short trips in it, it seems to track about 24 mpg, and uh, I, I've done some highway driving on it, too, and what was interesting is that registered like 34 mpg now i'm not sure that you're gonna maintain that over the long run but to me getting anywhere from 24 to 34 mpg is pretty darn good that's better at least as good as the range of my fiat 500 which is a much smaller car with a smaller engine not as much pep so the fact that they are getting that kind of range and again i've been driving it here primarily with that eco setting which is actually probably what i'd recommend it seems to be a very comfortable uh, setting for the transmission and throttle response, uh, you know, is is pretty good. So I'm pretty impressed with that. It, it kind of shows you what, um, you know, cars have become here over the last few years. Now, I will say, as we're kind of doing our last um, walk around on this thing, is that this has been a pretty nice car. I'm actually surprised on it, about it. It's not a car that I really would have thought about as I'm on the road. It's not something that would have, you know, caught my eye by any means, but it does have a lot of that Dodge Dart Chrysler 200, you know, attractiveness to it. To me, even on kind of this low end model here, Overall, it's a pretty nice package. I like the color of the wheels. I think they've done a nice job and it's got a nice shape and kind of a nice aggressive sporty front end. Uh, you know, even on this level, 
I guess for me, I would, if I were shopping this car, I'd look at what it would take to go to maybe one level up, right? Can I get some bigger wheels? Can I get maybe a nicer material on the seats? Maybe that leather wrapped steering wheel. And that's really, I think, kind of all it's missing for the mo most part, you know, for something that I would want to live with over the long run. I just think it's got a kind of a nice balanced shape. It's, it's a pretty nice little car and not a lot of money. So if you're looking for something that's going to get good mileage, be nice and compact, have a little bit of personality, have a little bit of pep. Um, maybe you're not carrying people all the time, but if you are carrying them and you want something that is going to be pretty comfortable in the back seat, I think this is it. It's uh, pretty nice overall. So that's what I love and hate about this 2017 Hyundai Elantra. Peter Von Panda, out.